Okay, so we're gonna do something a little bit unorthodox today and we're actually gonna be looking at this AI generative fill. Now, this is really interesting because, you know, I do take photos here and there when it comes to uh, professional work um, and even just some of my old photos, you know, when I was a photographer, just the things that you can do now, I wish I would have been able to do that back then because, you know, Photoshop was a really hard game to get into, especially if you are trying to create a whole bunch of different things, remove things, add things in. This thing can make it so much better. I only just downloaded this Photoshop beta right now. So you're going to fly with me at the same time. You're going to be seeing this as I'm seeing it and testing it out. So I am completely fresh. So don't smash me in the comments too hard because I'm just, you know, playing around with this. And I added a couple of photos into a little bit of a folder so we can have a play and see what we can actually get out of this because from what I've seen, this thing is incredible. So let's get straight into it. Let's start off with this one. This is a photo, Jason Marsh Photography. This is a photo that I took at least six years ago on the Nikon, maybe D750. Nikon, I know right um, so essentially what I would want to try and do is let's just see what it can do with this background so uh, essentially I'm just going to add this right here all around here and generative fill let's type in um, beach water and generate and let's see what it can actually do because it would be interesting if you could mimic a beach create the sand, create a little bit of water, some little waves, ripples going through there. I don't know. I don't know how this is going to work. I really don't, but uh, apparently this is, it's just really good. Some of the stuff that I've seen is just incredible. And that's fast. That was only like maybe 10 seconds. Whoa. Okay, that's not bad. It's created a little bit of um, reflections there too. Well, and I can see you can do this. So you can change to number three. Wow, that that is impressive. Look at number two. I mean, that's pretty decent. What if I typed in beach campfire? Let's see if that can generate something quite quick. Wow, it's at least... It's about 10 seconds. That's pretty quick. Um, this just opens up the possibilities, especially if you do have some sort of professional work, you do want to add bits and pieces in there. <laughs> That's a little bit outrageous, to be honest. Um, yeah, no, that does not look real. But I mean, we've reached some limitations there. But I mean, that's pretty decent, this one right here. That's not bad. Let's go into something else. Um, let's try this one. Okay, this is the one thing about this uh, wedding shoot that I did maybe about six years ago, and there was a sofa on this left-hand side, and then you've got the couch on the right-hand side. I just wish they were even, symmetrical, because everything on this scene is symmetrical, or meant to be relatively symmetrical. And my Photoshop skills, obviously, weren't that great back then, and they're still not great now, but uh, what if I put a uh, couch? Maybe it comes down to the prompts that you actually tell this AI generator as well, because the prompts, I mean, couch in Australia means a long sofa, so maybe I should be putting sofa. Wow, that's not bad, especially considering, you know, it has to try and uh, remove it from underneath her veil but we could be a little bit better. I mean, that's not bad, but I don't know what that is. That's really strange. What if we click generate again? Will that regenerate? Yeah, it looks like obviously you just regenerate the same thing, same prompts. And I'm assuming just a different style couch. It'd be nice if I could add the same couch. I mean, that's not too bad. <laughs> I mean, look, you probably wouldn't, you, you could touch it up, make the carpet look exactly the same and just clean it up a little bit. But I mean, it gives you a really quick and good start. Like that's, that's not too bad. I wouldn't, I wouldn't complain about that. That's pretty decent. Um, so I mean, let's, let's try something a little bit more complex. Let's see if we can remove things. 
let's see if we can remove this bag. So this is Joanna. Um, I always do shoots with her um, whenever I have new products. It's just, um, she's always available. So we will try and remove, I mean, I'll just do this roughly. Here we go. There we go. Let's just put remove bag. Let's see if that works. I mean, you would think so, considering what it did last time. Um, but obviously it doesn't just remove this bag, it's gonna remove the chain, this, um, the reflection, not the reflection, the shadow as well. It's gonna remove the shadow. Wow. Did that just, that removed it. And obviously you gotta remove it from <laughs> the shadow as well. Actually, why not? Let's see if it can remove the bag in the shadow. Because, I mean, what if you had to do, had a shoot and they were trying to uh, advertise that dress and they didn't want that bag in it? You'd be like, well, I can't really shoot again, especially if the model, you know, comes from a different state or a different country. They wouldn't even know that that's been removed. I mean, you could probably clean that up yourself as well. The difficult thing is trying to remove this chain, I think. Ah, oh, yeah, okay. So what you would have to do is like, really, what you would have to do is really finesse it. Remove chain. It really does just come down to the prompts, I think, and what you actually try and tell it to see if it will actually generate something that you want. And I mean, that is very impressive. Like, you wouldn't even know that that's not part of the dress. Like, that is insane. Look, okay, so... Get that out of the way. So that is with bag and without bag. With and without <laughs> That is impressive, it's insane. But I mean, what if we had to, um, so this one is an old shoot as well. Um, what if we just wanted to add a little bit on the sides, like a longer format? So I'll just shift select that. I won't say anything in the prompts and just see what it generates. Um, so see what happens with this one. See if we can just try and recreate a nice sort of clean looking image. So this could potentially be like a, a really long portrait. I mean, that is impressive. That is impressive. What else has it given us? I mean, you could literally choose any of those absolutely any of those and if you just wanted to remove just say remove let's see if it removes my my um my logo there jason morris photo cinema so that's slightly after photography that's probably when i was starting to do a little bit of video and easy quick remove i mean you could remove that yourself really easy but adding all this in in the side i mean what if you wanted to add a little bit of foreground element or background element sorry what if we went uh, palm trees out of focus. You reckon that will do anything if it puts a palm tree in the background out of focus? I mean, you probably wouldn't because that's already a beautiful image, just nice and clean. You could probably print that out, put it on a wall. That is not a palm tree. That is like two little poles. Yeah, there you go. That's that's not bad. That's not bad. But I would actually prefer just the clean image there anyway. Um, let's try... Ah, so this was my wife when she was pregnant. So I did a maternity shoot for her. Same thing, I think this was on... No, I think this was on the A7 III. So what if we wanted a nice sort of long... Uh, I suppose portrait. The tough thing with this one is... 
like it, it clearly does really well with mimicking the colors and the tone of your color grade. This one, I really wanted nice desaturated greens and try and make the, her warm skin pop. And we'll see if this works because this would be a fantastic one to actually print out and put on a wall, just a really long canvas sort of print out. I mean, it's okay. Some distracting parts in the top there. Yeah, see that's getting... There, look at that. Literally look like you're in an open field of sunflowers. That's impressive. What if we wanted to make a... Actually, here we go. Let's see what it can do with... Merka's arms. So this is my friend Merka. We did a shoot uh, to test the FX30 if it could take photos. So we might try one at a time because I'll go. Actually, I won't say anything. It needs to recreate her arm here. And this, I think we're going to run into some limitations because it has obviously has to recreate a body part, which I don't know if it would be possible but it could I mean that's okay it's done something a little bit strange there with her her dress skirt dress top whatever it is I mean that looks pretty decent her arm already was in a very awkward position to start off with whoa that that looks almost spot on also, what you can see, see how it's a little bit soft, and then this one is a little bit grainy. So what you could do is go into filter noise, 4%, yeah, let's try 4%. There you go, that looks pretty much identical. I mean, the stitching there is not great. You could probably clean that up if you really wanted to, but it's recreated that sandstone wall, it's recreated the shapes on the wall, and obviously this side's gonna be, that side's gonna be really easy because it just needs to recreate the sandstone wall and the shapes of the light, which is pretty basic, but I'm very impressed with that. If you'd wanted to have a longer image, like because it's an, a, a three by two in portrait and you want like, let's say a three by two or a 16 by nine image. Look at that. That is fantastic. Absolutely incredible. Let's try, let's try another one. Let's try this one. So if you want to do some professional work um, I already like this image. You've got depth in the foreground, you've got depth in the background, um, and then you've got obviously got the image there, the lighting's beautiful, but what if, what if we wanted to add, let's say here, uh, green plant out of focus. Do you have to put out of focus? Maybe. Comes down to the prompts again, but I'll put green plant out of focus because if we can go up here, you can see there's, I put a nice green plant in the background. Just to add a little bit of color, make it pop a little bit. Where's the green plant? Oh, there we go. Yeah, that's not bad. So it only gave me one green plant in the foreground, which is interesting. You'd think the prompts being, give me a green plant. Okay, there we go. That's, nah, this one, this one. Simple, it's basic, but in all honesty, the image was pretty decent as it is anyway. Um, and what if we wanted, what if we wanted a YouTube banner? Let's say I'm a, a wildlife photographer and I wanted to use this photo as my YouTube banner. And YouTube banners are really long, right? Something like that. Probably not like that, but anyway. Let's uh, shift select and just let it do its thing. What if we wanted to have the duck center of frame and then words just on either side, you know, Jason Morris photography, wildlife photography or something, and then put uh, subscribe and then a few bits and pieces as a YouTube banner because these ones are really long. When it comes to YouTube banners, they're so long, you don't wanna compromise on that three by two image and crop significantly in. They're very difficult to make. I mean, unless you're extremely good on Photoshop. But this Photoshop beta is making things so easy. 
I mean, that's clean. I'm not sure what the go is with that. I would like a little bit of foreground element, which uh, you can see the, the generation, <laughs> generation, what it's generated on the sides. Like, that's cool. That looks like you've shot through something to capture the duck. So these are put uh, a little bit of out of focus. I mean, that's a little bit too focused, but I mean, you could probably regenerate. But I mean, it's not too bad to use as a YouTube banner. You don't want to take away from the focus of the duck, though. So you can see these ones. It just takes away the focus of the duck. So you would most likely use something else. I mean, you, you could just regenerate or you could tell it to add trees, foreground trees or something. Out of focus foreground trees. Yeah, it really just depends on those prompts. That's the most interesting part. But I mean, you can literally create a YouTube banner within 10 to 15 seconds. Like this is, this is crazy quick. Insane how, how good these, oh, that one's terrible. It's way too distracting. And I, yeah, I can see these other two. They're not looking too great. Oh, there we go. We found a winner. That looks beautiful. So you've got the greens, you've got the duck, you've got the blues, a little foreground element. You can put words right here. That is amazing. But you can see, once again, it looks a bit, actually, it's a bit smooth. Oh, but even the grain. So same again, add a little bit of noise. Let's just go 2% this time. Just to add something. Yeah, there you go. So it even sort of blends it in. It looks a little bit strange because the water's quite smooth in the background. But I mean, look at that for a YouTube banner. That's pretty impressive. Actually, I really want to make a YouTube banner myself. Ah, Adobe Bridge. I accidentally, I always hit Adobe Bridge all the time, right below open. I don't want to. What if, let's do one more. Should we do one more? Let's try one more. Here you go, here's my friend Shannon. Oh, this one, this one's a good one, that's right. I, I shot this with the Helios lens, so you've got swirly bokeh. I wonder if, let's let's say we wanted to center frame Shannon and added swirly bokeh. So let's see what swirly bokeh does. Um, I wonder if it can actually understand what swirly bokeh is in terms of the prompt i could just put swirly out of focus bokeh balls maybe i mean that's pretty good look at that it's even regenerated her red dress quite well you wouldn't be able to tell i mean obviously <laughs> the swirly bokeh on that right hand side there is none on the left so it doesn't really know what swirly bokeh is kind of does there you can see it's almost that's impressive i'd be happy with that one i'd be really happy with that one now that one's well off that one's well off that that's not bad it's done well <laughs> well there you go so this is literally my first go at trying photoshop beta and it's really intuitive if you already know the basic commands of photoshop photoshop beta is perfectly fine because all you need to do is select the area generate fill generative fill that is insane and wow i can't believe what you can actually do with some of these things it's incredible the technology that they've come out with Photoshop have done a really good job and I'm pretty excited to, uh, you know, to actually get this in motion and continue to use this a little bit more. Hang on, I'm just gonna try and remove this tag. I mean, I could probably remove the tag myself, but <laughs> anyway, if you found this video useful, you know, give it a thumbs up, that'd be amazing. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And uh, if you want more of these little quick videos, I would love to make them. They're very, actually, this was fun to make. Um, and I would love to do more and look at that. It's removed the tag for me You don't even have to know how to use Photoshop anymore. This is This is insane. I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching. Let's get it